remember all of a sudden how that made you feel when you were little and somebody said that word. I mean, you might start being excessively worried, uh, crying when you normally don't cry, um, feeling oppressed. That means that the trauma you're going through has succeeded in wounding you and the devil has done exactly what he planned. When we choose obedience with our free will in this brain, where we choose God's way and we choose to forgive, to release, to see it through his eyes, our heart produces peace and our kidneys produce, produce joy. joy. So I'm going to have to watch this program again. <laughs> <laughs> and again. My name is Jenny and in this series we are speaking about the well-being of our souls. In fact, we are learning how we can take control over the area of our thoughts so that we can live in the full freedom, the full healing and the full victory that Jesus won for us on the cross. Now, I have a wonderful panel who's helping us to get into the depth and the richness of God's Word. Won't you help me welcome them? I have Christine Blumstein from Kenneth Copeland Ministries Africa. A powerful add to our wonderful panel is Katie Souza from Expected End Ministries in the USA. And Dr. Michelle Stradon from Eagle's Wings Ministries. Now, in this session, we have been discussing the soul. In fact, we've been learning how important every single thought is. And in the programs we're going into now, we're going to be discussing the importance of how sin and trauma affect our lives. Let's get in the Word together. It is such a joy to be able to get together and speak about the truth of God's Word, knowing that every word is instrumental in setting you free from whatever bondage or whatever sickness, whatever error you have found, the enemy has gained a, a foothold in your lives. Do you remember, ladies, and I think it's so important that we just recap a little bit before we get into this body of this program is we have gone on a journey where we understood the first part, I really believe, in order to get into our healing and get what God has for us is to recognize where our thoughts come from. Whether we know already that we've established that it's a spiritual force, that either it's God influenced by God, our thoughts are influenced by Him, or they are influenced by the enemy. And whichever one we agree upon becomes an established thought inside of us or a tree. We spoke about a memory. The thoughts that we meditate on become memories. We also recognize that when the enemy puts a thought in your mind that you recognize is from him, you can choose to just disregard it straight away. Take it captive and throw it out. And medically, Michelle, you spoke about how then it just becomes like hot air. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't create anything. So don't be fearful about the thoughts because <laughs> the thoughts will come. What you need to focus on is to recognize where they come from and then to take action and make sure that those negative thoughts don't create negative strongholds in you. But now that we've come further down the line and if we are in the place where we have got to the place where those negative thoughts have begun constructing these negative trees that take over after the image of the enemy and will poison our bodies, what do we do then? Because now we're talking about a whole kind of <clears throat> ripple effect where sin comes into our lives, how that affects us, traumas that happen that take, off, take us off guard and the way we react to them. All these, even being in the womb, while we are in the womb of our mom, things happen that can give the enemy a foothold into our lives that will affect who we become. Katie, won't you take us into this? Yeah, I think it's important that we understand what wounds the soul, or as Michelle said, what creates those bad trees. 
yes. in our mind. You know, the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. And the Bible actually talks about our soul becoming wounded through things like sin, trauma, and ancestral things in the womb. So let's just talk about sin, first of all. I mean, the Bible says in Psalm 41, it says, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mm -hmm. So sin, when we sin, or someone even sins against us, talks about us, gossips about us, hurts our feelings, or we sin, we fall into drug abuse or alcohol, or even like gossip, overeating, negative thought patterns. Those sins can actually wound the soul, create a bad tree, and then cause disease and disorder. Um, the good news is that God does promise to heal the wounds in our soul that come from sin. I mean, that's in Isaiah 30, 26 in the Amplified Classic. It says, the Lord binds up the hurt of his people and heals their wounds inflicted by their sin wow. so even if you've sinned and blown it and messed up and you've actually wounded your soul god is there and we're going to talk about that in future programs on how to actually heal those wounds but here's the thing catch yourself when you're in a sin mm -hmm. catch yourself when you're thinking a bitter thought or you've taken an action or eventual action against someone or you you've slipped into maybe too much wine or or you know you're relying on pills maybe you've fallen into a sin and if you have you are beginning to wound your soul you're beginning to create the bad trace as Michelle talked about again um, so it's very important for you to catch yourself even with trauma you have to catch yourself when you're being or allowing trauma to wound you you remember what happened to Job? He went through a lot of trauma. I mean, he had the Sabians and the Chaldeans came and, you know, killed all his, his staff, stole the herds and the flocks, and then his children were killed, all of them, when a whirlwind came and knocked down the house, and they all were killed at once. And then in the next chapter, uh, chapter 2 of Job, he's covered from head to toe with painful boils. And those traumas that he'd been through, actually wounded his soul. Now, how do we know that? Because 28 times in the book of Job, it says that Job says stuff like, I am wounded in soul. I am vexed in soul. My soul is being poured out. I am bitter in soul. So he's telling us that he has allowed, listen to me, the trauma to wound him. Wow. The devil will create trauma in your life. He'll create a stressful situation. He'll work through another person. Remember, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but against powers and spirits. Correct. So powers and spirits work through flesh and blood. They work through people to traumatize us, to put stress on us. He works through situations. He creates traumatic situations in order to get us to be able to be wounded in our soul. You've got to recognize when a trauma in your life is beginning to wound you. And how do you know? I mean, you might start being excessively worried, a crying when you normally don't cry, um, feeling oppressed. That means that the trauma you're going through has succeeded in wounding you, and the devil has done exactly what he planned, Amen. wounding you through that stressful, painful situation. We can't allow the trauma to wound us. We've got to catch it, and we've got to get it healed. We also have to understand, though, that we were born with wounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, the word womb in the New Testament means, get this, the soul. Wow. The soul. So what does that mean? That means that when you are being formed in the womb, you are receiving into your soul all of the woundedness that was in your parents and your grandparents and in your bloodline. That's why as the generations go by, people are getting more and more sick, more and more depressed, more and more bitter, more and more upset because they're inheriting as they're being formed in the womb, all these sins and wounds and things that came from the traumas that happened in their bloodline. I mean, look at what uh, uh, David talks about it. Look at what he says. This is Psalm 51, five. He says, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Okay, now iniquity is generational sin, right? And sin wounds the soul. So he's saying, when I was shapen in my mother's womb, remember the word womb means the soul, I was receiving into my soul everything that was in my generation's soul. And that's why, like, five verses later, he says, Now God created me a clean heart. The word heart there means the soul. He's saying, Heal my soul of everything I inherited when I was being shapen in the womb. Heal my soul of those wounds. Now, this is very important because this stuff, as you know, both these ladies are so amazing. They've been talking about how those sins and the wounds and the things in their soul lead to sickness. Look at the man at Acts 3. The cripple at the gate, beautiful. It says that he was what? Crippled from the womb. He was born with a physical disease 
that came upon his physical body because of what was in his soul when he was being shaped in the womb, what he received from the bloodline, what all the wounds that his parents and grandparents and everybody else were carrying were passed down to him when he was being shaped in the womb and it caused him to be born with a crippling disease. Even in Acts 14, it says there was a man crippled in his feet from the womb. The Bible doesn't make a mistake when it tells us that detail. It's telling us that things that our people are born with, diseases that they develop, come from the soul that came from them receiving those wounds when they were being shaped in the womb. Amen. It's important to understand that so we know that even diseases we're born with, we can get healed when the soul gets healed. Wow. That is powerful, powerful, powerful. Michelle. Yeah, very, very good. Just to back that up, what you were saying from the medical side, um, there was a, an experiment that was carried out by a doctor and uh, ethically speaking, Maybe he should have lost his license for carrying out this experiment, but it still proved something very important, um, that we can receive wounds to our, our spirit and our soul in the womb. And what he basically did is he did scans on pregnant mothers, mm. and he would say um, to the mothers, I'm sorry, I've got bad news for you. Your baby has died, and we're going to have to remove your baby from the womb. And in response to those words, those babies would start kicking frantically just to let Going the doctor yeah, just to let the doctor and the mother know that it's not dead and it's in fact alive and uh, therefore shouldn't be removed from the womb. And the point being that, you know, even in the womb we can hear, you know, what is being said. So for example, um, if say it was a pregnancy out of wedlock and uh, the father says, What, you're pregnant? You know, I want nothing to do with the baby. Um, rejection can come in and, and wound us in our spirit and in our soul right from the womb. And when we're born and when we grow up, we might not necessarily remember the wounds, but uh, sorry, the words, but that wound will still be in our spirit and soul and affect us until it's recognized and dealt with. Wow. Yeah. So just to back up from the wow. medical side, what you were saying. Wow. You know. Christine. Yeah, just to back up what Michelle is saying here that our, 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 our soul gets wounded and therefore I believe that we should put the conscience added to the soul, not yes. just our world, our, our, our emotions. emotions, but also our conscience. Mm. Because if you have something in your conscience and somebody just says something that you, that person did not even mean to hurt you, but boom, it brings up a reaction from you because you remember that person didn't intend to hurt you or say anything nasty, but you remember all of a sudden how that made you feel when you were little and somebody said that word. Mm -hmm. Wow, so it brings it up. Now, mm -hmm. I remember you had a whole teaching uh, also on, on your conscience. Is it your conscience that you spoke yeah. about? Okay, so... Um, Yes, all right. Again, to just build on what Katie said, um, there's something called the brain-heart-kidney connection. Mm -hmm. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's extremely interesting when you look into how the human body is formed in the womb. And um, just like there's a triunity of our soul in that we have a mind, free will, and emotions, we also have a triunity of our spirit in that our spirit is made of three parts. Uh, Watchman Nee, who was a great teacher of the Word yes. of God, showed that from Scripture. And then our body is also made of a triunity. There's wow. three parts to our body. Now, how would you divide the body because it's such a complex organism into three parts? Because there has to be a triunity of the body if there's a triunity of the spirit and soul. Exactly. But when you look at how the baby forms in the womb, it's in, in medicine, it's called embryology. It's the study of the time period from when the sperm unites with the female egg and how it grows and develops in the womb. Um, there's three layers that the human body is originally derived from, called the ectoderm, which is the outer layer, the mesoderm, which is the middle layer, and the endoderm, which is the inner layer. Right. So, uh, and understanding that brings a lot of revelation in, in terms of different spiritual things. But what I want to bring out here is that when you look at the different parts of the body that develop from those three original layers, the ectoderm forms the brain and skin and um, our nervous system and everything that gives us communication and awareness. 
The mesoderm forms our muscles, bones, joints, everything that allows us to move, as well as our heart and our kidneys. Right. And then the endoderm, which is the inner layer, forms our internal organs, our stomach and intestines, and our endocrine system, which is the parts of our body that produces hormones. hormones right. Now, when I was, I remember in being in medical school and studying this and knowing that God doesn't do anything by accident. Right. Why, why did the heart and the kidneys develop from the middle layer, the mesoderm, and not from the endoderm, like all the other organs? Well, there's something very special about the heart and the kidneys, and that's that those two organs also have the ability to think. Wow. Um, we've got more than one brain. We all know about the brain in our, inside our heads. Um, you know, in which our free will functions and everything we've been speaking about. But um, the heart and the kidneys also have the ability to think. Now, uh, a brain is basically a collection of nerves. And so let's first of all talk about the heart brain, and then we'll talk about the kidneys, and then I'll just share how, from Scripture how it all links together, how we see this brain-heart-kidney connection in Romans 14, verse 17. Oh. Okay, so... Um, uh, in the heart, we, there's a collection of about 40,000 nerves that functions independently from the nerves in our brain inside our heads. And it's what science calls the heart brain. Right. And basically, the heart brain functions like a conscience, which is what you were speaking about. And that actually confirms what the Bible said in Romans 2 verse 15, that the heart is the seat of moral conscience. Yes. Because the function of the heart brain is to advise your free will on what to do with a thought in your mind. I love that. And it helps you to make the right decision. So what happens is, as a thought gets to your free will, say, for example, you're faced with a situation where someone has mistreated you, mm -hmm. and they've gossiped about you, maybe they falsely accused you, they've wronged you in some way. So um, the enemy is going to come in, like Katie explained, to try and take advantage of the situation to give us trauma and wounds so he can take mm -hmm. us into bondage. Mm -hmm. So a thought of bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, and so on will come to our mind. And uh, when it gets to our free will, our free will has to make a choice. In that moment, here comes the heart brain to advise the free will what to do. And this is where it functions like a conscience. So, for example, in this case, it would advise the free will, you know, because this is where the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. Release, forgive, let it go, overcome evil with good. And so... The free will is advised by the heart brain on what to do, um, but it's still ultimately up to our free will to make the choice. Are we going to allow ourselves to meditate on that thought um, and get angry and bitter, or are we going to choose to forgive? So if we make the decision with our free will to listen to that message and voice from our heart brain, and we make the choice to forgive, to overcome evil with good in this example, what the heart brain does physically is the heart produces a chemical called ANF, which stands for atrial natriuretic factor, and it's got various physical functions in the heart and the body, but it carries the emotion of peace. Oh, so yeah. when we, we feel peace, what's happening is this peace chemical is being released that's binding to receptors on the surface of our body cells, and that's how we physically feel the emotion you of can. peace. You can, you do, you physically yeah. feel peace. Yeah. It's really good. And it's very, very good so for you. It creates health in your body. It's just got beneficial effects in every way. So that's what happens when our free will listens to our heart brain. But we can also choose not to listen, because the free will can be advised, you know, to release and forgive, but we can say, no, I'm not prepared to forgive. You can still overrule. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not prepared to forgive. I'm going to get angry and bitter with this person, and they're going to pay for what they did, and you, want, you, want to, you can make the choice to repay evil with evil. And so in this, in this case, because the free will didn't listen to the heart brain, the heart doesn't produce that peace chemical ANF. Instead, it throws out the whole body chemistry and your body goes into a poisonous state of stress. Mm. And um, so now it's putting your, your body into instead into a state of illness. So, so that, in short, is the heart brain. In short. <laughs> it's yeah, very amen. short for me, wow. trust me. Yeah. And uh, then yeah, quickly, so the, awesome. um, the kidneys. Um, the, you know, our kidneys have the ability to think. And um, oh, there's so much I could share in terms of how the body's tied in with the tabernacle. But just to cut, again, the long story short, um, the, the function of the brain and the kidneys is to form a perspective of the situation we are facing. For example, we've just mis uh, been mistreated. We've just faced an unjust situation. Um, our husband has left us. Our father rejected us. 
a, a difficult situation has come up. Now, whether we're going to overcome in that situation or go into bondage because of it, is, it depends on the perspective Correct. that we, we form. So the function of the brain and the left kidney is to form a perspective of the situation we are facing. And then the function of the brain and the right kidney, based on the perspective made in the left kidney, it devises a strategy to move forward. So if we, if we um, see things from God's perspective, where, for example, we say, okay, I've been rejected, but I know that Abba Father is allowed this. What can he bring through this situation? How is he wanting to use this for me to get to know him more? How is he wanting to use this so that I can cultivate the fruits of the Spirit in my life and thereby become like Jesus? Because we can't forgive unless we have an enemy. Yeah. And um, how is he wanting to use this situation for me to make him known through my life as I demonstrate who he is to those around me? So that would be forming it from God's perspective. If the left kidney is trained to be able to do that, the right kidney is able to devise a strategy to move forward in what we experience is faith and hope, where we can go through that difficult situation with an excited, joyful expectancy. And what happens physically is the, the, the kidneys release a hormone called DHEA, which carries the emotion of joy. So we experience joy and feel joy. The Lord yes, is my strength. Exactly. So now let's tie this whole brain heart kidney connection into Romans 14, verse 17. It says, The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, peace and, and joy. joy in the Holy Ghost. Okay, and it's, 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 it's real, not just spiritually, but also physically. Because when we choose obedience with our free will in this brain, where we choose God's way and we choose to forgive, to release, to see it through his eyes. Our heart produces peace and our kidneys produce joy. joy. Righteousness, peace and joy. <laughs> okay, this is so good. Okay, so, so I'm going to have to watch this program again. <laughs> again, that is... Wow! Oh, wow! Uh, it's really good. I, I'm but loving you, it. Yeah. But you see, we can, we can choose with our free will not to listen to the Holy Spirit. So the heart, which is the body's strongest oscillator, puts our body into this poisonous state of stress. And instead of releasing the DHEA hormone, which carries joy, the kidneys release stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol. Yes. And when adrenaline and cortisol is present in your body in high levels for a long time, it um, causes all sorts of diseases. It weakens your immune system, predisposing you to allergies, to cancer, to all sorts of bondages that come in um, as a result of coming in line with the devil's way of thinking, allowing him, as Katie explained, to wound our souls and thereby take us into bondage spiritually, psychologically, and physically. Oh. You know what? It, it, you know what? What really helps? What brings peace again to me as well is we are taught how to do the whole spiritual thing mm -hmm. uh, about uh, renewing our minds. Mm -hmm. I understand that, you know, mm -hmm. and I understand because you kind of think it's only on this level. Mm -hmm. You don't understand how it triggers off the heart mm -hmm. and the Everything kidneys is. to come in line with the mind yeah. and mm -hmm. together solve the problems. <laughs> We could solve the problems of the world, you know. It's just amazing. It's, it, it gives you, I want to say, almost keys to the kingdom. But what it's giving us is an understanding that we can understand how to appropriate our healing, how to appropriate our victory. It's amazing how we kind of just look at it short term. We don't understand. We're so quick to go get our healing. But how do we walk in a lasting healing? How do we walk yeah, in a lasting right, victory? Yeah, yeah. Yes, the blood of Jesus does it. I believe that with all of my heart. But we have to continue in that healing, which is where we're going to go <laughs> as well. We are getting there. But I, I want this to start putting inside of our understanding right now that everything you are learning concerning in renewing your mind to the Word of God doesn't just affect this. It affects every part of you as well as the outcome. And that's important. We're not going to the Word just so that we can think nice thoughts to make us feel good at the time. We are going to the Word of God to solve the problem. It teaches us how to act. Like you said with the kidneys, and I'm not repeating, I could never repeat what you said, but the whole thing about how it builds in a strategy on yeah. how I can walk yeah, out this you, healing, God. how my attitude will change. And when that changes, it's almost, uh, you know, you're not allowed to say magic in these things, but it's 
you know, just for no better, supernaturally, yeah. God goes to work on your behalf. You take right. that difficult mind. situation and you make it a, you make a profit from it by transforming it into a kingdom opportunity. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. There, you <laughs> <see>. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so now we have no more time left, but we're going to go into our next program soon. Those of you who want to email us, send your emails to higherlife at myfaithtv.com and we'll get right back to you and answer those questions you have. Higher Life Seasons are now available through the Faith app. If we can just have that truth to pull us up, That's right. then you're not going to hear the sound of the negativity. That's right. View the latest episodes today by downloading the Faith app on Google Play or the App Store. What an amazing program this has been. We have learned so much about the importance of gaining control over our thought life. I know that you have really grasped a good understanding of how we can begin to take captive every thought that wants to raise itself against what the Word of God says concerning us. Studio audience, you have been such a blessing to us. I want to thank you for being here and for being so enthusiastic. And to our panel, amazing women, you've been so wonderful. <laughs> and of course, to those of you at home, what a blessing it is to know that what we experience in here isn't limited to the walls of the studio, but it's going straight into your homes, straight into where you are watching and building your faith. Now, in our next program, we're going to continue learning about the soul and the effects that sin and trauma have on our lives. Until then, God bless you and goodbye. It's a curse that's given a legal right to come into our lives because of disobedience and sin, which is simply not walking according to God's ways and His Word. We are perishing for lack of knowledge because there are weapons in the Bible come on. to get us healed of all that list of stuff. The truth is He saved your spirit so that you can now get your spirit to dictate to your sick soul. The Word of God conceived in your spirit formed in you on your tongue and spoken through your mouth is creative power.